For this video, we are building a themed clock. This clock will have a welder's theme with visual and audio enhancements and a YouTube subscriber counter. I'm building this project from my friend's channel, Haslip Cycle Works. Robert does a lot of projects building custom motorcycles and general metal work. I hope this clock will be cool enough to put up in his shop. If you follow this channel, you may remember I did a collab project with Robert a while ago. There will be a link to his channel in the description. So let's see how you can build this. I purchased an inexpensive 10 inch analog clock. The nice thing about this clock is that it's easy to take apart and has enough room behind the face for additional electronics. After popping off the protective cover, you need to rip off the clock's arms. It takes a little bit of force, but they come off without any tools and the clock won't feel a thing. Next, remove the clock motor and we are down to the bare platform. Now that we got the clock in pieces, next thing we want to do is to remove this face. And it's pretty easy to do, I assume. Ugh. There we go. Now you get to pick a graphic for the new face. I chose this welder logo that Robert uses for his t-shirts. I printed mine out using a 3D printer because oddly, my 3D printer is more reliable and produces better results than my inkjet does. So my printer wasn't big enough to print the entire face of the clock, and that's okay, because I'm going to be using these standoffs, and these standoffs have holes cut into them for LEDs. So the plan is I'm gonna set these standoffs behind this face, and I'm gonna backlight it, but also this gives me hopefully enough room to put electronics behind it, like LEDs for the welding and the YouTube counter at the bottom. When wiring up the LEDs, just note that there is a flat side of the LED bulb, and this is where the ground side is. After fitting all the LEDs, I did a quick test to ensure that they are still working. This is a preview of the backlight effect, and I think it is looking pretty good. Now, onto the electronics that will add the visual and audio effects. We have the speaker, the dual LED for the welding effect, a voltage regulator to power the clock motor, the Node MCU microcontroller, the DF Player Mini to play the MP3 files, and the eight digit numerical display to show the YouTube subscriber count. Here is the plan how this should work. First, the Node MCU will connect to your local network. Once connected, it will get the current time from a time server, and it will also connect to the YouTube API to get the channel subscriber count. Then the subscriber count will be shown on the display. One thing that I find really annoying about the YouTube API is that it only provides the first three digits of your subscriber count. So if you have 1,954 subs, it will only return 1,950. I can only imagine the conversation that must have happened to make this decision at YouTube. All right, team, I brought you two in here because we need some ideas. Happiness is at an all time high. We can't be having that at YouTube. We need to find ways to make our users just mad enough to leave, but won't. So, what ideas do you two have? Let's see here. The, who, uh, what is it, the, um, uh, uh, that last time. Uh, Look, I got it. We could, we could play the same commercial back to back. People are going to hate that. That's perfect. All right, Jason, come on. People hate your ideas. What do you got for us? Come on. Well, I uh, I do have this one thing. You know how YouTube has this API that returns you the exact number of subscribers you have? Well, we could just return the first three digits instead of the whole number. I mean, oh, oh that idea, that's the best worst idea I've ever heard. What do you think? Oh man. He's blue screened. That idea was so good, he divided by zero. You were on your way to upper management with ideas like this. This is why I brought you two here. So back to this. If your subscriber count does change, it will play a special audio file and the light effect to celebrate. Every hour, it will also play a welding sound effect and the welding light effect. The light effect was achieved by using the fast LED library and randomizing the brightness settings. This gives a cool flicker effect that is similar to a welding arc. As I mentioned earlier, this clock provides a nice area to mount the electronics. These are where I mounted the components and I just hot glued them down. 
I positioned the DF Player Mini close to the edge where I could still access the SD card to update the audio files if needed. The DF Player is a sound module that can play thousands of MP3 files from an SD Mini card. It's very small so it will likely fit in your project too. It has stereo output for headphones, amplified 3 watt mono output for a small speaker, and you can control the file it plays through serial or analog inputs. It's really simple to use, and the link is in the description if you want to check it out. After wiring everything up, I did a quick test to ensure things are still working. Get up, get out there and do it. I then glued down all the connections to help keep them secure. I reused the original clock face as a cover for the electronics. This also helped illuminate the face by reflecting the backlight. So because there's already 5 volts going to the clock, I'm going to install this fake battery that was 3D printed and a little step down module so I can convert the 5 volts to 1.5 volts and then he will have unlimited power for the clock. This voltage regulator works okay but it's extremely sensitive to adjust. The closest I could get to 1.5 volts to emulate the AA battery was 1.6. Almost done with the clock. The last thing I'm going to do is add a decorative design. So I have this template here. And what I'm going to do with the template is go around the outside of the clock to drill some holes so they're evenly spaced. And then I'm going to put these nice stainless steel screws in those holes and I think it'll make it look a little bit more industrial. All right, I think that looks a lot better. The seven segment display looks terrible without some kind of diffuser. So I printed out a very thin cover for it using an SLA printer with black resin. But you can also use a colored acrylic or even paper. Since the faceplate was now offset from the original position, I had to extend the connectors to the clock motor. I printed these adapters and glued them onto the arms, then pressed them into the clock motor. The only thing left to do is put the cover back on, and the theme clock is complete. Wow. Can you turn that on? So that's it for this project. I think it turned out really nice. I'm really impressed with the outcome. All I have to do now is reprogram it for Robert's Wi-Fi access, so when he gets it, all he has to do is plug it in, and it'll start working right away. And we'll also get his reaction to see what he thinks of it too. Our buddy, Jason over at Code makes it go. He sent us a uh, new garage warming present. Let's check it out. All right, so I've got it hung up um, in a good spot in the shop. What I'll do is plug it in, and we'll make sure it connects. And we should know if it connects because it should show our subscriber count. And then we'll see what it does, see what the, the sound and stuff does that he says um, it should do. So fingers crossed and let's hope Jason got it right. Looks like it's trying to connect. Get up, get up there and do it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now that is cool.